What is good, YouTube? Evan, I'm back for another OU battle. And beautiful, wonderful Rocky people, I am sorry. I'm sorry you see in front of you the one, the only, the incredible Gen 5 uh, retro team with the Sandwich Exegil. Um, I promise, I promise, this is the last battle you'll see this team for a while. Um, this battle actually happened a long time ago. I just haven't had a chance to post it yet. So I wanted to post it before I went on into doing new battles uh, with my new OU team. And you've heard me say... This team did really, really well. I think it's only lost one match. You haven't seen this team lose yet, have you? This is it. This is the one loss that we have with this team. I want to spoil it for you right now. Um, this was a really rough match I had with this team. Um, and I made some misplays. And I'm posting it because I'm, I I went up against a powerful adversary. And I made some, in my opinion, really bad plays that really cost me the match. I think I could have come away with this win had I played... I mean, you can always say that, but I think I made a, a few key crucial mistakes I want to show you in this battle. Um, this is obviously against my good friend, Lindemar Rocky. Went Lindemar, um, valued member of Rocket HQ, a longtime supporter, good friend of ours. Um, always a pleasure to battle him. Um, so obviously, yes, this is the Sam 5, the Gen 5 Retro team. Um, you can see my opponent bringing, this is the first time I've ever seen him use this team. Um, I believe he's placed in some stream tournaments with this team. I think he's won, at least one, actually. Um, Breloom, Aegislash, Zapdos, Azumar, Azumarill. I don't know why I stumbled over that word. Uh, Mega Pinsir and the Heatran. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this battle. So, remember Rocket people, if you like this video, please leave a like down below. It really helps Rocket HQ out, helps the channel grow. Um, and leave a comment, let us know, do you like this, what don't you like, what do you like? Uh, and remember, you can even get points in the Rocket tier system for leaving some really incredible, insightful comments. So, leads. I'm going to Micro Ninja just because it's my default lead on this team. Predicting that he leads with the Breloom. Uh, the fact that he led with this makes me think he might be Scarfed. But also, I, he could have just predicted me. So, a Mach Punch is really obvious. You know, I could have predicted him to switch and gone for a U-turn. But it was risking far, far, far too much if I had stayed in and taken a Mach Punch right there. So, I go into my Mega Venusaur. Um, and here, I do what Mega Venusaur is designed to do. Um, I decide to go for a Substitute on the predicted switch. Um... He doesn't know my set this time. Obviously, the fact that he won the Age of Slash makes me think he predicted a Sludge Bomb. Um, I could have been HP Fire, but Age of Slash would have taken an HP Fire very well. He also could have been Weakness Policy set, so we don't know yet what his Age of Slash is. Um, now the first turn, Age of Slash gets to click a move. I go for my Leech Seed. I'm behind a sub. Uh, I'm predicting him to be the special variant, obviously becoming more and more common in singles. Uh, I'm actually wanting a special variant on this team that I think is the best possible Age of Slash to one. He does show me the Shadow Ball, uh, which because I'm physically defensive, defensive and it, it Slash is a monster, is enough to make my sub fade. So I get chip damage off of the Leap Seed, um, get some of my own HP back. I'm obviously not buying a sub anymore, um, and I see no lefties recovery on his part. Um, no, excuse me, lefties would have happened first, so I still don't know. We'll know this turn what item he is. Um, here I switch out into my Swamper. I'm not sure this was the best play, to be honest. I'm saving my Sceptile, or my... Um, Venusaur because I need it for the Azumarill. Um, but unfortunately, my opponent gets the defense drop. Um, now I know that he is, in fact, lefties. Here, this was a misplay that I made. I predicted my opponent to switch out uh, into, like, his Zapdos, for example. Um, because I, you know, was going to go for Earthquake. So I go for Ice Punch, predicting a switch. But honestly, I have switch-ins for Zapdos. And that is, that's the mistake I made with that prediction. I thought he was going to switch, and I didn't consider what would happen if he didn't. Had I gone for Earthquake, that would have been a dead Age of Slash, and that would have been huge, huge, huge for me. Um, but I went for Ice Punch, predicting a switch, not taking the time to realize I have a Tyranitar, I have a Venusaur, I have, an, I have so many switch-ins for, for his Zapdos. I should have just gone for Earthquake, I lost nothing by doing so. So, that's why you rewatch battles, that's why you, you know, take notes, you always want to try to improve. Um, so that was a huge turn for me that I messed up right there. Um, I don't think I would deem myself here either. I bring in my Tyranitar. Um, and I think it was painfully obvious that my opponent wanted to um, to go for King Shield. Because that's exactly what I would have done to, you know, scout. Um, my I could have got Rocks up, which would have made my opponent afraid. And I also have Fire Blast on this Tyranitar. But I'm a Pursuit version. I go for Pursuit being tempted to hit him while he would switch out in Blade form. Um... Melindemar is a good play, and I know I never switch out in Blade form if I have lefties. I always let myself get the extra turn of recovery. Um, and so here I make another mistake. I go for Fire Blast, even though I'm pretty sure he doesn't have Sacred Sword at this point. Um, 
Actually, no, I'm sorry. That was another battle. So here I do finally make a good play. Um, because he's seen Pursuit, I think it's painfully obvious that he's going to go into Azumail. I'm actually going to my own Aegis Slash here. I think I definitely should have switched into Venusaur. Venusaur definitely would have been better. Um, but here I do what this Aegis Slash, Aegis Slash says designed to do. He brings in his patented What's Up Lindemar. Um, and I go into, I go for a sub, which is exactly what this Aegis Slash is designed to do. So I get by my sub because now something on his team has to take Shadow Ball Flash Cannon. By going for sub, I alleviate me having to predict. And I'm free to just get whatever would, is best off. Um, so here he goes for the Lava Plume. Um, and I decide to go ahead and go for uh, my Shadow Ball. Um, and this is kind of where me foddering the Swampert becomes huge. Um, because now he's, I don't have anything to really wall this Heatran effectively. Um, so I definitely should have gone for Earthquake. Just again, I should have calculated. If he switched out, what did I lose? Not a whole lot. It was improbable that he would go into his Azumarill. So I should have just gone for Earthquake. Um, so there, I go for the King Shield Hill just to get some more lefties HP back. See what he wants to do. Um, obviously, the Air Balloon is popped, which is good news. It means Extra Jill can do some work to this thing later. Um, and that's kind of my end goal with his team is to get uh, Exit on a place to sweep. Right now, I realize my primary obstacle is going to be the uh, Breloom. Here, I think I make a significant misplay. It's, I mean, I don't have the Swamp, but I don't really have a switch in. I don't want to go in the Venusaur right now. And so I'm almost in a position where I have to take a Lava Plume. Um, and I, that means risking the burn chance, which does happen. So the Heatran goes down. But now my Age Slash is severely crippled. And because of the burn, I can't sub uh, lefties uh, recover effectively. So that's a really bad position for me to be in, especially because this thing could be one of my answers to the Bray Loom. Um, so uh, things are not looking good for me right now. I need to not waste turns based on my HP, so I do decide to go ahead and switch out on the T-Tar. Again, this shows why I should have gone for Earthquake with Swampert. I lost nothing. I lost nothing. Um... If he switched the Zapdos on my Earthquake. So there I go ahead and get uh, the Heat Wave goes off. Um, does very little damage to me. Um, definitely makes me think this is a defensive version. Um, I'm defenses as well, but that's just pitiful, pitiful damage. Um, here I was actually really disappointed. Um, I predicted my opponent to go in the Breloom. Um, realizing he couldn't touch my Tyranitar. So I went for the Fire Blast, which would have been absolutely huge for me. Um, Lindemar, if you're watching this, leave in the comments why you didn't switch out and your Breloom there. I'm curious. Um, but I thought it was so painfully obvious that he would switch into his Breloom. But I now know that he's a Sash Breloom, so he might have wanted to preserve the Sash. But here, now that he knows I'm Pursuit Fire Blast, he knows I can't touch an Ozumarill. So I do predict him to go in the Ozumarill. I thought the switch was too obvious to ignore. Um... So that's exactly what I do, um, go into my Venusaur, and here, I'm not sure this was the white play either, I go for a sub, um, it was an okay play, I'll put it that way, I think maybe going out white for a Giga Drain, I don't know, it's hard to say, um, I'm a little iffy on that play, just because I'm subbing a lot without getting a whole lot of recovery back, so here I decided to just go ahead and go for the Leech Seed, see what he wants to do, um, Shadow Ball is highly possible, but he could also go for a Flash Cannon predicting my switch. Probably won't predict me to switch though until after I get a Leech Seed up. Um, so Shadow Ball is most likely. Does in fact go for the Shadow Ball. And as we know, is enough to break my sub. So here I kind of have to think long and hard. Now, if I was Lindo, I would be going for King Shields, to be honest. Um, because, you know, I don't think he wants to take more damage from Giga Drain. But based on how he's been playing, I predict him to actually not King Shield and just stay in sword form. So I decide to go for a Giga Drain because it'll do decent because he's in sword form. Um, get some HP back. He actually predicts me to switch, um, which is huge for me because it won't do as much damage um, as the Shadow Ball would have. Um, so I do take a lot of damage though. Um, obviously it's not a resisted hit, which is unfortunate. Um, but now... This is another tough play. I really, really, really thought he'd switch out. I would have switched out if I was him. I wouldn't have foddered my Aegis Slash like this. Um, but based on how he's been playing this match, he hasn't been switching when I am when I would have switched. Um, and honestly, I don't think he's really been predicting that much. He's sort of just been going, kind of reading what's on the field. So 
I go and go for the Giga Drain just because I predict him to stay in, honestly. Finally catching on that he's playing not like I would play. So I'm having to alter my predictions. Um, now the Pinsir comes out. And obviously I have my Tyrantar um, to bring in here. Uh, and get some sand, get some residual damage off. Um, and obviously I can bring in Exegil next turn. I'm really hoping he doesn't go for a Swords Dance here. Uh, which would be really, really problematic. Um, because he'd be able to do work to Exegil with Quick Attack. Um, so here, surprisingly, he goes for the return. Again, so not predicting any switches, which I just find so interesting. Um, I'm guessing because Venusaur was a huge threat to his Azumarill, he just prioritized getting rid of it. Here he goes for Earthquake. Unfortunately, it is enough damage to take T-Tar out, so that's really unfortunate. Um, but here I know I should go into my Exodrill, and this is this was a little bit of a precarious situation. Um... I decided to go ahead and go for Wax Slide, which I went for because, again, obviously I would have switched out, but based on how Lindo was playing, I'm not sure he would have switched out. Um, so I go for on my Rock Slide instead of like an Earthquake. If I went for Earthquake there, that would have been absolutely huge for me. Um, so here, this this is the biggest misplay make in the entire game. Um, I decide to risk this thing being Scarfed or whatever, and I decided to see if I can live a Mach Punch, which was so foolish. Even if I lived it, I would have gone down the Life Orb and lost what was going to be my best sweeper for the rest of his team. That was a ridiculously foolish move. I had no reason not to go into this Aegis Slash. That was a very, very, very poor play. Him switching it out there actually does make me think he is banded or scarfed. Um... But that was, that was the misplay of the entire game out there. You know, I was so focused on thinking he would switch out, predicting me to switch, that I went for a rock slide, thinking I could live it. And, and again, my extra drill swept his whole team, his Zapdos. Like, it hit everything. I needed, I needed to save that thing. So I did a very poor job in this battle of prioritizing my threats, which is really sad because I still did decently well in this, in this match, you know. Um... And so it's really frustrating because had I made some smarter plays here, this match could have gone in my favor. And it always disappoints me when I don't play well against a good competitor because I feel like I missed out on a chance for an amazing battle. And I don't think this battle was amazing. I think it's a learning experience, to be honest. Um, and that's why I'm posting this one. Um, also, so you all can see a loss with this team because this is the only battle this team has lost. And I want you to see how this team got defeated. Um, it's probably one of the best teams I've ever created. So really sad to see the team go. But here... He can't make a ridiculously silly play. I think at this point I'm just kind of getting mentally discouraged um, and not thinking very clearly. I go for a sub, which was a ridiculous, ridiculous move. Um, the fact that I'm even leaving this thing in on a Zapdos is sad. Um, cause just colossal misplays. So now Azumarill can destroy my whole team. Yeah, I have nothing left to stop that. Um, so here I go into my Greninja. Uh, obviously Scarf Greninja uh, can do a lot of, lot of work. Um, and I believe I only have this left and I have Age Slash left. Those are my last two pokes. So here I go for the Ice Beam. Looking at his team, it's what I'd most prefer to be locked into. Uh, he goes into Azumarill, and here I need a Freeze. Like, a Freeze is what needs to happen. Um, and even then I'm not in a great position, because he still has the Breloom. Um, and I foddered my Venusaur and my, um... My Age Slash is almost dead. So I foddered everything that could have taken a Mach Punch. So I'm just... I did a very poor job of prioritizing my threats and realizes what I need to keep alive. So I get a crit, but I've yet to contract a freeze. Um, so I'm not going to be able to kill this Azumarill. Based on the Citrus and him switching moves, I'm going to predict that he's uh, not Assault Vest. Because I did way too much for him to be Assault Vest. He's probably... Um, I would say he's probably uh, Belly Drum since he has a Citrus Berry as well. Um, I don't know why I even mentioned him, the possibility. So, now I go into my Age Slash. Obviously, I'll live a, um, Aqua Jet. Um, and I go into Blade Form, go for the Shadow Ball. Um, will obviously be enough to take out the Azumarill, but it's not going to be enough. Like, I, this is my last poke, and I'm burned, and I'm at 5 HP. So, even with lefties, burn will take me out this turn. Um, so it's actually the match. Excuse me. Very, very disappointing on my end. You know, I'm always sad when I, when I don't play well against good competitors because I feel like I miss on a chance of an, for an epic battle. And I think I did surprisingly well for having lost so many key threats in ways that were my own fault. Um, so again, I want to bring you this battle just so you could see how this team finally lost. 
Um, I'll definitely use this team again in the future. Uh, I love this team. I'm just going to move on to some other teams now. Um, check out the team building series on our channel if you haven't yet. If you just go to our channel's homepage, you'll see all of our playlists. You can look through OU, UU, whatever meta you want to watch. You can also see the team building videos. Um, you can see the new OU team I'll be posting battles with in the near future. But yeah, thank you, Lindo, as always, for the battle. Um, and I hope that you can learn from, from this battle. And the biggest thing I want to impart to you all is when you're making predictions, always, always consider what would happen if you predict wrong. Um, that's kind of my biggest misplay that I made in this battle is I didn't spend enough time thinking about what would happen if Lindo didn't make a play I would play. I, we've played many times before. I know where Lindo's skill level is at, so I predicted him to do the things I would do. And he didn't, which was an excellent strategy on his point. I think he predicted me in some cases to to make those good predictions. And he acted accordingly, adjusting his game. So very good job on his end. But again, always assess what pokes you need for what. And always consider the impact of what your actions could do if you predict wrong. Because me letting Swamper die was huge. I can't believe I stayed with Exegil. That was a ridiculous, ridiculous play on my part. Um, so you'll see I definitely made some misplays. I think the psychological aspect of this match was kind of apparent. You know, Lindo's a great player. At this point, I had yet to beat him, so I think maybe I was a little intimidated, hard to say. But, you know, always, always relax. Always think clearly. Always take your time and just have fun in the game. And again, don't be afraid to lose. We all do. I wanted to show you. I lose too. So, hey, we all lose. Um, and don't ever stop learning from your mistakes and from the battles you have. I encourage you to always rewatch your battles, win or lose, and see what you can do better. So thank you, Lindo, so much for the battle. I hope you all enjoyed seeing this monstrous team finally get taken down. Don't worry, it'll be back in the future, though, for some more just some more slaughter, some more destruction. But I will be bringing a new OU team next time you see an OU video from me. So stay tuned from that, or for that, excuse me. Definitely leave a comment down below. I'll leave a like or dislike. Let us know what you think of the video. Uh, and definitely check out the links in the description to the to the Google Drive and to our stream. People, the Rocketeer system is live. You can be leveling up now, going from a grunt to an admin, doing exactly what I'm doing now. And the Gym Leader Challenge is a huge way to get points. Uh, you can get, a th I think it's almost 15k points of experience just for becoming champion in the Pokemon League. So check that out. We've got official Gym Leader art, badges, all kinds of fun stuff. Check out those links in the Google Drive down below. Thank you so much for watching. And also stay tuned for a Rocket War Room on this team. Uh, a show where I do an in-depth presentation on this team. Uh, so you can see why I made the decisions I made. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Abinumbra. Have a good one.